In our lesson today, we will look at sinusoidal curve fitting. We will fit a sinusoidal model to a graph. We will also construct sinusoidal equations to model real world data. When we have graphs of real world data, they are transformed typically from our parent function. Our goal is to recreate the equations in order to model these situations. Let's look at a first example here. Let's look at a typical cosine function. Now when we are recreating graphs or creating equations to model situations, the easiest graph to create is a cosine function because we have a clear max and we have a clear min. Whereas a sine function, it's hard to determine where that initial point is. If you look at this graph here, for example, temperature versus month, where is that zero? Is it here at this point? Is it here? Where is that zero? It's not as easy to find. So anytime you can use a cosine function, it's a little bit easier. Let's look at how we would do this. Now this is just a parent function, but we can use this to help us determine how to find these key characteristics when we are curve fitting. How do we find the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is always our high minus our low divided by two. So if we take our high here, this is one, and then we subtract our low, which is negative one, and then we divide all this by two. One minus a negative one becomes two, and two divided by two is one. And we know that our amplitude is in fact one. How about our midline? Remember that our midline is here. It takes the high and the low and it cuts it in half. Therefore, it's called the midline. Well, our high is one. If we add to that our low of negative one and we divide by two, well, one plus a negative one is zero and zero divided by two is just zero, which is where we can see in the parent function that our midline sits. How about our B value of the period? Remember that when we have a transformed graph, it looks something like this y equals a cosine b x minus c plus d. So we're looking for this b value. The b, that b value in and of itself isn't necessarily the period. So what we do is we take the start, which if we look right here is zero, and we take the end, which is at two pi. So that distance two pi is what we divide into two pi. When we do that, it tells us our B value. In this case, our B value would be one, which if you look at the cosine function, you can see that it is one. Since there's nothing in front of the X, it's one. That means we complete one full rotation in two pi. How about our phase shift? Whenever we're looking at these, and if we're looking at a cosine function, then we can apply this. We find the X value at the first max. Here's our first max here, and the x value is zero. And in this case, that makes sense because we don't have a phase shift. If we go back to some of these graphs and we find our, our max, say we're looking here, then our x value would be maybe in here at six. So then we would have a phase shift of six. We can use these key characteristics and how we find them in order to solve problems like this next one. A pet store clerk noticed that the population in the gerbil habitat varied sinusoidally with respect to time in days. He carefully collected data and graphed his resulting equation. From the graph, determine the amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift, which is our midline, and we're going to write the equation of the graph. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can come up with these, and then we'll put them into an equation. Let's start off with our amplitude. Here we have our amplitude here, and it looks like 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 is probably our high, so we can write that down. Remember then we subtract our low, so we'll say that this is up here at 32. And let's mark our x here. Our x looks like it's 17. So I'll go ahead and mark this as 17, 32. 
and our low right down here looks like it's at 3 comma 2. So our low is 2. If we take 32 minus 2 and divide by 2, we get 15. So we know that our amplitude is 15. Using the same information, we can determine our midline by just adding the high to the low and dividing by 2. In other words, taking the average, that's 34, which gives us 17. Our midline is 17. In situations like these, it's easier to then draw in the midline to give you a better idea of what we're looking at. In this case, it looks like we have a cosine function, but it's reflected. It's upside down. Let's now figure out the B value of the period. It looks like we complete one full period in 28 days. We start here at day 3, and it looks like we are finishing here at day 31. So one complete period in 28 days. Well, we would then take 2 pi divided by 28, reduce that, and that gives us our B value. How about our phase shift? Well, that's easy, right? We're starting here at 3, so our phase shift is 3. Now we have all the components we need in order to create an equation. What we can do now is just plug these in. So we're going to use a cosine function, and we know that it's reflected, so we need a negative amplitude, so that's negative 15. Cosine, now we're ready for our B value, which we said was pi over 14. And then our phase shift is a positive 3, so we write that as x minus 3. We have a vertical shift up. Our midline is no longer at 0. It's at 17. So then we can have plus 17. And this is an equation that represents this graph. In order to check my work, I went ahead and graphed my equation in Desmos. Notice that I distributed the pi over 14 into the parentheses in order to enable Desmos to graph this appropriately. But you can see here that our low, 3 over 2, is what we said. And here's our max, it's 17 over 32. Let's look at a second example. What happens if all we have is data, but we know that it makes a sinusoidal curve? Well, we can do the same thing. We can use our data to help us find the amplitude. If you like, go ahead and pause and give this a try on your own. Starting with the amplitude, I circled the high and I circled the low. I divided by 2, and that gave me my amplitude. How about the midline? Well, we know we're going to add these two and divide by 2. For our midline, then, we get 54.4. How about the B value of the period? Well, remember, we're going to take the start and go to the finish. So we're looking at our months here. We start at 1 and we go to 7. But this is just the low to the high. So if we look back on this previous one, this is going from a low to a high. That's not quite a full period. That's half of a period. So we have to think about that. If we go from the low to the high, that's six months. That's half a period. So then we would need to multiply that by 2. So we know that 12 is the full period. It takes us 12 months, which makes sense to go through an entire cycle. 2 pi divided by 12, if we reduce that, we end up with pi over 6. That's our B value. How about our phase shift? Well, we're not starting at 0. We're actually starting at 1. So in this case, we would say that our phase shift is 1. Let's write our equation. Plugging in all our numbers, this becomes our equation. Notice that our amplitude is again negative because we're starting with a low and we're going to a high. And if you think about the normal parent function, a parent function back here on this slide starts with a high and then goes to the low versus the one that we just completed, which means it was reflected. Let's do one last example. In this example, a team of biologists have discovered a new creature in the rainforest. They note the temperature of the animal appears to vary sinusoidally over time. A max temperature of 125 degrees occurs 15 minutes after they start their examination. 
a minimum temperature of 99 degrees occurs 28 minutes later. The team would like to find a way to predict the animal's temperature over time in minutes. Your task is to help them by creating a graph of one full period and an equation of temperature as a function of time in minutes. This is your chance to see what you know. Go ahead and pause the video. Come up with an equation in order to answer these questions. Okay, and here is what I came up with. Notice that I circled the max and the min here. We use the max and the min to help us find our amplitude and our midline. By subtracting those and dividing by two, we have our amplitude. By taking the average, we end up with our midline. In order to find the B value, we have to consider how much time has gone by. Notice that they said between the maximum temperature of 125 and the minimum, that was 28 minutes. But remember, between the max and the min is only half of a cosine cycle. So if that's half, we multiply by two, that tells us that a whole period occurs in 56 minutes. To find the B value, remember, divide that into two pi, and we get pi over 28. Because our high occurs 15 minutes after they start the examination, we have a phase shift of 15. Putting that all together, we end up with an equation. Now if we were to graph that, notice then again I distributed the B value into the parentheses, but I can check that my graph is correct. Here's my midline. The first thing is to always graph your midline right here. And then here's my high. At, after 15 minutes, it was 125. Another 28 minutes went by, which goes from 15 to 43, and you can see my low is 99. So I know my equation is correct because my graph accurately represents my equation. If I wanted to graph this by hand, it would be easy just to plot the high and the low and know that this halfway distance in time was 28 minutes. I would go out another 28 minutes in order to plot the same high. And that concludes our lesson today on sinusoidal curve fitting. So hopefully, you feel comfortable fitting a sinusoidal model to a graph as well as constructing sinusoidal equations to represent real-world data.